Wouldst thou like us thine arguments to be as formal as possible? Hmm. It's important to know that we speak differently depending on where we are, just like we act differently depending on where we are. I would hope that the way you act in a classroom isn't the same way you'd act with your parents. I'm not a parent figure, am I? My daughter doesn't think so. Anyway, knowing how to make your language as formal as possible doesn't mean that it's any statement on how you normally speak about things. We just use our language in specific ways here. First off, on a personal note, I don't think there's anything more formal than Bogart in a tuxedo. Now, onto it. Formal writing has not only a choice of things to do, but there is also things you should specifically avoid. Such as first or second person narrative voice. For the most part, these are no-nos. Third person narration. We are talking directly about the subject from that point of view is going to be the best. Second person narration does have its place when you're talking about a set of instructions and you're using the imperative voice. But if I'm writing a business letter, I'm going to want to keep the focus third person because it's going to be on behalf of the business, not on behalf of me. I'm not saying that first and second person are never appropriate because first person is certainly going to be appropriate when you're writing your job letter, for instance. However, as a normal rule of thumb, only go to first or second person if there's a good reason to do so. Secondly, contractions are things that you should do away with. And the problem with contractions is that they remind the reader of spoken language instead of written language. And we always find spoken language to be less formal. So, do not, not don't. Lachets and colloquialisms. This hit me like a ton of bricks the first time I thought about it. That kind of thing. Because one of the things you will be striving for in your language is the most wide realm of possible audiences. If you're dealing with international audiences, you certainly don't want to be using phrases which they don't understand. If you're dealing with certain countries, you probably don't want to talk about we're going to hit a home run here because if they don't play baseball, they have no idea what you're talking about. Emotion and empathy. And I don't want to say that emotion and empathy are bad. I think everybody should have a lot more emotion and empathy. But staying in a neutral position, in a calm, neutral position in terms of the writing, will allow people to think first in terms of reason. You don't want customers to get emotionally worked up about you, and your tone can help dictate their responses. Then finally, there's what I call wiffle off words. If there's a word in there that doesn't really help you all that much, it should be cut. Somewhat, kind of, maybe. These are all wiffle waffle words because they mean absolutely nothing. And all they really do is they make your word less strong, wimpier, wiffling. Plus, it's fun to say. Say it with me. Wiffle waffle words. Apart from just avoiding things, being able to pick the right word, a good word, a colorful, precise word, is going to be one of your biggest tools as a formal writer, a writer using formal language. And this is, to a certain extent, a chance to let your inner artiste out. So let's go through some examples. Why would you say the word start when you can say initiate, commence, or embark? These are all words that sound a lot better, sound a lot more formal. You could say end, but you could talk about concluding, or terminating, or culminating. Why would you say I'll try, when you could say you'd make the attempt? I will endeavor. I will undertake a good effort. 
You want to refer to the kids, or do you want to refer to children, youth, juveniles? Kind of. Oh, this is just an ugly sounding word, and it just kind of reeks as wiffle waffle. To some degree, or to some extent, or relatively, are all words that will narrow down to a more precise meaning, or at the very least, they will sound like you're narrowing down to a more precise reason, which makes you look more formal. Nowadays, well, first, I think you should probably talk about the specific time you're talking about, but if you must, currently, presently, or contemporaneous are all words that mean the same thing and work a lot better. Pretty is a kind of word that is informal and could open you up to certain liabilities. You could get sued if you talked about someone being sexy. You can use the words appealing, attractive, or aesthetically pleasing to get across the same general point. Why say okay when you could say adequate, acceptable, or correct? And we could go on and on, originate, discuss, apologize, indicate, so on and so forth. But it's a good idea to pull up options, whether on a thesaurus or mentally, and look for the ones which will make you look the most professional. When you use formal language, it means immediately your audience is going to take you that much more seriously. They're going to give you that much more of the benefit of the doubt. You're going to look like more of an expert to them. After all, would you buy a car from someone who said, hey dude? See you next video.